everyone, I wanted to go over some more scriptures that just to me go along with my testimony and my healing journey that I've got a group of scriptures on our identity in Christ and God's identity, nature, and character. And then I feel like there's instructional ones too. And it's not to earn Christ paid for it all, right? It's not our earning gifts are free, but he knows what's good for us. God knows what's good for us. And, you know, like it says, where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. That doesn't mean we should sin. We get to live by the spirit and have life and peace. And so he just, he does know uh, what's good for us. And when there's maybe consequences in the natural. So just wanted to go through these with you. I think all but one are in ESV and I'll say if not so English standard version. First one is Isaiah 26, three through four. You, God, keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock, right? Christ is the solid rock on which we stand. And we know that that perfect peace is perfect. Shalom, shalom. It says it twice in the Hebrew. And that word shalom is health, prospering in all things, peace, calm, completeness, wholeness. It's so much more than what we might think of as the world's peace. God's peace is so big, just like his love is so big and he is trustworthy. So we can trust in him. Romans eight, five through six says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit for to set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. We know that we are to seek the things that are above, right? We'll go over that one in a minute. But just we're setting our mind on the word of God, the truth of God, on God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, Father, God, and not our circumstances, things in the natural. Sometimes things in the natural seem more true, but the word of God is true and it created everything in the natural. The eternal is more true it is life and peace again those are big words god's life is abundant next verse is ephesians 3 14 through 21 for this reason i bow my knee knees before the father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being so that christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the same what is the breadth and length and height and depth And to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. So our instructions in that so much good stuff in that but that we are rooted and grounded into his love right anchored his his hope is our anchor his love is where we grow our roots that strong foundation the everlasting rock of christ that we grow our roots into so we can truly comprehend how amazing his love is and so that we can be filled with all the fullness of God, the Holy Spirit's in us, but we want it filled through our soul and body, right? We're spirit, soul, and body. We want it filled to overflowing. Whatever we're filled of, filled of comes out. So we want it filled to overflowing. And that is, yeah, it's getting rooted and grounded in him. So Colossians 3, the first two verses says, 
if then you have been raised with Christ, which we have, so if then you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. So you have been raised with Christ and seated with him, the right hand of God, seated in him. <laughs> so if then, so we, that's true. So we are seeking things that are above. We're seeking after just that more knowledge, rooting, grounding in God's love. And we're setting our minds on the eternal things on God and not on things on the earth. So thank you, God, as we do that. In Philippians 4, 8 through 9, it says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. So I was just reminded in a song, I think it's Sherry Kigi, that, you know, God, Jesus is true and honorable and just and pure and lovely and commendable and excellent and worthy of praise. So I'm going to think on Jesus. I'm going to think on the name of Jesus. And, you know, it, it's habitually, whatever we've learned and received and heard and seen in him, habitually practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. It's like we know he's in us, but again, we have a spirit, soul, and body. So we think on those things and our spirit, our, our soul aligns with our spirit and our soul is that mind, will, and emotion. So thank you, God, for those instructions. Colossians 2, 19 is kind of in the negative because they did not hold fast to the head. It says, and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments grows with a growth that is from God. So if we hold fast to the head, which is Christ, right? Christ is the head of the body. We are the body of Christ. So if we hold fast to the head from whom the whole body nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments grows with a growth that is from God. Thank you, God, that it is your growth. And we hold fast to you. You are the vine. We are the branches. You are the head. We are the body. Proverbs 3, 5 through 8, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. So God, we do trust you because you are trustworthy we don't lean on our own understanding we acknowledge you in all our ways so it's just that continuing to know you in that pray which means you know setting aside our ways and, and aligning them with your ways like switching them out just spending time with you and so we do that we make our path straight when we don't try to be wise in our own eyes and we just get to really revere you and turn away from evil and turn toward you it is healing to our flesh and refreshment to our bones so thank you lord proverbs eighteen twenty one: death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit and the fruits are the consequences the effects so thank you, God, for those instructions. Help us speak life over ourselves and others. Proverbs 17, 22, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Thank you for the joy that is within us. In Proverbs 4, 20 to 22, my son, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. 
keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. Hmm. So God, we just do that. We keep it in our sight, in our ears, in what we're thinking on. You know, we're always going to be thinking on something. Things are going to be running through our head. We might be even muttering something. Let it be words that are life and healing. Your words, God. Mm. With understanding. And Joshua 1, 8 through 9 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So yeah, again, meditate, mutter, think on, perseverate on. Why not perseverate on God's truths and promises? And then you'll make your way prosperous and have good success. So, and you know, yeah. He's with us wherever we go. His spirit is in us. He's with us wherever we go. Thank you, Lord. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 is instructions from God. It says, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So that is his will for us, that we rejoice always, that we pray without ceasing, or again, know him, fellowship with him, interact with him, switch out our kind of fleshly desires for his as we delight in him and he gives us the desires of our heart and just give thanks in all circumstances, in all, not for all, right? And Philemon 6, and I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ like this in New King James, it says, and I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing in us for the sake of Christ. That would still be ESV, but I know that it's just may become effective as you acknowledge every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ Jesus. So thank you, God, that as we acknowledge, as we know, as we get this understanding of every good and perfect gift that comes from you, right? That every good thing in us is from you as we acknowledge it, the sharing of our faith becomes effective. Thank you, Lord. And Psalm 8-2 out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. Just think childlike faith. Childlike praise establishes strength and it stills or silences in those versions, the enemy and the avenger. So as we have childlike praise and children praising God, it is strength against the enemy and it silences the enemy and the avenger. That is big. The consequences for our sin, God paid for them. It doesn't mean just stay in, right? But turn, praise him, and he sets us free. Romans 12, 1 through 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good 
and acceptable and perfect. Now this verse gets said a lot, but we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. So it's submitting to God. God, I trust you because you are trustworthy. <laughs> and that's our spiritual worship. And to be conformed is to be shaped from the outside in. So we're not to be conformed by the world around us, but he transformed from the inside out, made completely new, right? We are new creations. The old is gone. The new is here. We're made completely new. But as we renew our minds, so we know the spirit's brand new. That's already done. The old's gone. The new's here. And that's another verse I should have brought in. <laughs> the old's gone. The new is here from 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Look it up. But um, as we are transformed, by the renewal of our mind, it's because we've got that brand new spirit, but we need our soul and body to be transformed by renewing our mind. So our mind is part of our soul. And as we align it to the spirit inside of us, the word of God, we are transformed from the inside out instead of the outside and like conformed. And, and we can discern what is the will of God. And that is just beautiful. So thank you, God. Psalm 103, the first five verses says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So we get to tell our soul, bless the Lord. Bless his holy name with all that is within me, right? And just re tell your soul, don't forget everything God's given me. He forgives all my sin and the consequences of my sin. He heals all my diseases. He, he pulls me out of the pit, right? Makes me brand new. And crowns with steadfast love and mercy. And thank you, God. And then just being reminded to praise the Lord. It's an instruction, right? So Psalm 150 says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we have breath. And we are to praise him in a whole bunch of different ways, right? Isn't that beautiful? Good instructions. And then we have Proverbs. There's so many others I could have added in here. But this is the last one I have on my, <clears throat> on my list. It's Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. Oh, we already read that one. <laughs> We're going to read it again. <clears throat> Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. But just take it in so many other verses, Galatians 2.20, you know, I mentioned 2 Corinthians 5.17, and, um, and Colossians 3, it's clothing ourselves or sinking into all the good stuff, <laughs> and um, yeah, just so many others. Thank you, God, for your word. I praise you for it. I thank you that you were just going to help each one of us receive what you have for us. Anybody listening to this now or in the future, just that they hear it as your word, your instructions. It's not to earn, but it's good instruction. So we just receive it 
We walk in it. We walk in you. You are our steadfast rock, God, in which we trust. You are trustworthy in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. I'll put this with the other kind of testimony verses and group it all together. I hope it's helpful to you and um, share it anywhere. Hope you have a wonderful day.